Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we actually once again have to talk about TikTok. I'm obviously traveling as well, so this one's going to be a little quicker, but this is actually kind of surprising and reinforces why none of us should be using TikTok as some new information has come to light. Now, I think also that this really underscores how intertwined the Chinese government is with corporations that are based out of China. Now, this is reporting coming from the New York Post, and they are reporting on a newly released report from Forbes, and full disclosure, I also uh, published with Forbes as well. Now, here's what's going on. Forbes surveyed hundreds of LinkedIn profiles for TikTok's employees, finding at least 300 workers that had previously held positions in Chinese state media, and 15 of those employees currently also work for China's state media organizations as well, meaning the government-owned media, their propaganda wings, TikTok employees are working for them simultaneously while they're working for TikTok. Quote, 15 indicate that current ByteDance employees are also concurrently employed by Chinese state media entities including Xinhua News Agency, China Radio International, and China Central China Global Television. Now, if you didn't know, the State Department has labeled these uh, organizations that I just listed as, quote, foreign government functionaries, meaning they are not independent media like we have here. They are basically the mouthpiece for the government, whatever the government wants to put out as, quote, unquote, news. Now, ByteDance or rather their spokesperson, Jennifer Banks, who I'm assuming is not Chinese, told Forbes that hiring is decided, quote, purely on in, an individual's professional capability to do their job. Quote, for our China market businesses, that includes people who have previously worked in government or state media positions in China. Now, outside of China, employees also bring experience in government, public policy, and media organizations from dozens of markets. End quote. That is their spokesperson. Now, if you recall, and I just recently did a video on this that got a lot of traction, TikTok recently admitted that employees from outside of the United States could access user information but insisted that such access required, quote, quote, robust security protocols and authorization, end quote, from its U.S. security team. However, leaked internal documents, if you recall from TikTok, also show that the company actively pushed employees to, quote, downplay the China Association, end quote, in order to help deal with the growing attention and criticism. Those leaked documents also showed that their security teams were not, in fact, authorizing Chinese employees based in China to access things. If you recall, they they had to go to the Chinese employees that had basically super user access to gain access, meaning Chinese employees based in China could access American data at will, despite essentially the attestations that their executives gave to Congress, U.S. Congress, on this. And so... For the record, you're thinking, Nick, what's the big deal? You know, we see government employees hired all the time, and it's true. So big tech will always, always, always hire former government employees, uh, you know, to that point. They're good for public policy. They understand the inner workings of the bureaucracy or the legal framework of the government that they happen to have belonged to and all of that. But why this is concerning is that TikTok has a history of deep ties to the Chinese government and Chinese law. And I've talked about this before, states that essentially they get access to a Chinese corporation corporation that is storing information on foreigners, meaning TikTok has an enormous amount, an enormous amount of data on U.S. citizens. The Chinese government gets access to that. TikTok's app, for the record, and I also did a video on this one that got even more traction than the leaked one, uh, basically was also reverse engineered by Internet 2.0 and an independent cybersecurity researcher, and essentially its data collection practices, and I'm not going to go through the whole litany of those things, but it's vastly worse than Facebook, and according to that independent researcher, the app was uh, basically attempting to evade detection as it was looking into other apps or it was looking at permissions and simply ignoring the permission. So you turn off the permission for, you know, whatever, and it was attempting to get around you turning off the permission as well. That was the independent researcher, Internet 2.0, also came out with a slew of things like it's turning on your GPS periodically and sending your location back to TikTok, whether you like it or not, you know, those kinds of things. And so, Quite frankly, how why anybody would use this app is beyond me, and we just now have an underscore of how deeply tied they are to the largest surveillance state in the world, and why, 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 why would you continue to use this app? And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP, and please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well, and as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everyone.